attest to this. He knows what a nuisance. Yep. Yep. <laughs> We're live. Rishi's just telling us what a nuisance she is. I'm going to find out a more sexual about nuisance. that. sexual nuisance. sexual deviant, that's what she is. Um, welcome yeah. to Shooting the Shit. We are here for International Men's Day. Woo! Woo! It's actually International Men's Day is on the 19th of November, which means it's going to be on Friday. Uh, last year we did an International Men's Day special, so we're doing one again, and that is now our uh, annual International Men's Day shooting the shit special. Because and we always do one we, on International. Yeah. Go on. We always do one. On international oh, yeah, I was going to say we always do one on International <laughs> Women's Day, and every time we do one on International Women's Day, everyone goes, "Well, there is an International men. Men's Day, is there?" I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> well, but first of all, and it's three hundred and sixty-four years. Shut up. Yeah. It's Friday. It's Friday. So you've got your own day, boys. Stop bloody moaning. Um, oh my God. We've hoodwinked a man into joining us. Yes. Yes. Here we it go. took us all year to find one who we was, who was one. charismatic, engaging, intelligent, and we didn't manage it. So we got Rob. We got Rob. <laughs> this, is, yeah, this is it. He's all representing people. all men. So everything he says today is on the behalf of all men in the world. So first of all, Rob, what's your name and where do you yeah. come from? Uh, I am Rob Pinder, um, and I have a company called Panda IT in Pontefract in West York. That's me. Oh, and I am nice. none of those things that you said. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, we shall find out, won't we? Um, yeah. Hannah, what's your name and where'd you come from? I'm Hannah from Grow Traffic. And Marisha, what's your name and where'd you come from? I'm Marisha from Noise and Mama Bear. Yeah, moms. Loving moms. the moms. We need to all get, that's a reminder actually, we need to get our mom's order in for Christmas, Christmas don't we? Mom. Yes, please do. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Please let me know. Uh, Christmas, Christmas cake, marmalade. Yeah, yeah. I, need, I need pre-orders, please. So for let sure. me know. Okay, we will get on that. Um, and I'm Rachel, also from Grow Traffic and from Shooting the Shit and from the Strap with Miss and I once worked in a garage. So there we go. We've got them all out of the way straight away. <laughs> and you've so, got fancy period knickers. Oh, yes, fancy period <laughs> knickers. Yes. Um, so, and oh, a rabbit. Oh, Yes, well, we, when we normally do at this point, like uh, a funny story from the week, um, and, and Hannah's pointed out that I requested for Christmas this week um, a papoose for the rabbit. Um, mm -hmm. I have good reasons for wanting a papoose for my rabbit, because when I'm cooking tea, the rabbit sits here on my shoulder, and I'm getting a crick. I'm going to turn into a hunchback. So if I just get a papoose, that's really sensible and a perfectly logical and thing. But it was very difficult to find a papoose that was big enough for you and not too big for the rabbit and also big big enough for the rabbit but not too small for you because I was going to buy a dolly papoose and then I thought you wouldn't get it round you. No. So, but I, have, I mean, I have managed to find one. So it's coming from China. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Right. Well, there we go. The There's a purpose like a human a, baby papoose. A human purpose. Yeah, but they're massive, aren't they? And the rabbit is very small. It is a very small rabbit. Yes, very small Or rabbit. you get a dolly papoose, which I probably have got somewhere from when the girls were little, when the big girl was little. Uh, oh, but it won't like go around you because I did have to try and wear it on several occasions when we're playing mums. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's so if one. you if you are a papoose manufacturer, there is a gap here in the market for rabbit papooses. Please get on with it. Anyway, we're not here today to talk about rabbit papooses. We are here today to talk about International Men's Day. So um, why do we need an International Men's Day? We need an International Men's Day because toxic masculinity is really, really fucking damaging to men and yeah. we say this so often you know we are feminists we are after equality and one of the main reasons for that is that we realize that the the status quo the patriarchy is 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 as damaging to men as it is to women so if you want to listen to last week's episode on raising feminist boys that's the kind of children end of the the spectrum and today we're here to talk about the grown-ups end of the spectrum. So a couple of statistics for you. Um, last year in the UK, 13 men per day took their own lives. Um, wow. And, wow. Yeah, and men uh, make up three in every four suicides. There is a massive, massive issue amongst men being able to talk about the problems, being able to find help. There's very little. There's there's so many organisations out there that help women, particularly like female victims of domestic abuse. There just aren't those same organisations there. Uh, and part of the reason for that also is that men just really struggle to, to talk about these things and to admit that they're having a problem because that's not seen as manly. Um, and we briefly touched on, you know, last week about the, the male difference between male and female WhatsApp chats and all the rest of it. And um, so let's dive straight in to talk. Wait. 
wait, Matthew, can, can I answer? ask you a question? Yes. Because May. I've been pondering about this. Rob, do you have like a WhatsApp chat with your mates? Yeah. Do you ever talk about your feelings in it? Absolutely not. It's just oh, okay. not so that, something that's done. For why right is or wrong, that? It's probably for wrong. Um, I, <laughs> that's a million dollar question, isn't it? It's mm. it's just it's I don't know whether it's historical or uh, you know it's just that kind of old male uh, stiff upper lip kind of thing that you get I guess around the world, but particularly in this country, there's the kind of the old fashioned British um, you know keep your problems to yourself yourself kind of thing. Um, but it's just something that doesn't happen. Um, it, it funnily enough, we have kind of WhatsApp groups with uh, mixed groups with, with men and women in and. Guys in that, I think, are more likely to say, do you know what, I've got a bit of a problem than it is in a group that's purely men. Um, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, but Rob, with those male WhatsApp chats, it, it, do you feel that if you were really struggling, say you were having a really depressed month and you were feeling completely shit and you needed to go for a pint with somebody, do you feel that you could put something in there if you needed to or would you just absolutely not go there at all? I personally wouldn't. I'd be more likely, I think, to to reach out to you know a friend on an individual basis and say, you know, hey, buddy, I've, I've got a bit of an issue, um, all that like that, than than kind of put it out into a, a group setting. Um, and do you think that's because you would be you would feel like you would be ridiculed if you said it, or do you feel like there's a tone to those WhatsApp chats and it's upbeat and it's cheery? And if you suddenly went in and said, "Guys, I'm really struggling," you'd you'd be scared of lowering the the mood or whatever. What yeah, what's at the heart of that? Potentially, I think um, it's difficult to say for me because I think I would I would take that attitude. Um, uh, whether or not it were, were male or female that I was speaking to, uh, just because that's me personally, I don't I don't tend to share my problems um, mm. with anyone, which is <laughs> which is an issue sometimes in itself. You know, I'm, mm. I'm very much one of those people who keep things bottled up. Um, but if you were to say what was my general feeling on it, I would say yeah, it's it's more a case of not wanting to bring the mood down and expose feelings to to a crowd more than anything else. Mm. Um, Almost would like you a, know you want to put blood in the water kind of thing yeah mm. w w would you know where to go if you were having problems like would yeah. you know where to access services i think so yeah um the it, it's uh, there's lots of things kind of online now and it's that's a double edged sword of social media particularly isn't it it's, um, mm. it's a place that can breed um all kinds of negative uh, aspects of human personality but you know you also get access to the the positive parts which is groups and 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 people within groups are willing to help i have seen men's groups popping up i was speaking to a client this morning steve dawson hello steve and he um he's part of a men's group that supports men obviously um in their mental health and they've got an allotment and so they all go out and like do work on the allotment and you know do not necessarily talk about the feelings but are just kind of there for each other and do something together to support to mm. support men and I, I think, think I've seen uh, more of them popping up. I think um, there's just definitely less um, than there are for women, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's it's the kind of access to them and um, visibility, I think, is the biggest issue. I wonder yeah. as well if there's like a stigma um, about accessing them. And, you know, if you, if you access a woman's group, a woman's only group, then... Um, then there's no never a big deal. Nobody ever really questions why you're doing that. But I suppose if if someone was to say to you, I'm going to join a, man, a man's group, I'd think, well, you're either a chauvinist or mentally unsound. You know, those are kind of that. That's not what I would think. That's you know, two of the two of the kind of perspectives of people who maybe join those sorts of groups. I, I think that's absolutely true, isn't it? Because women, and we said this last week, you know, we are very good at building communities and we will build friendship groups around us. And whether that be, you know, we go physically out or we have WhatsApp chats or they're online, but but we build those networks around us. And so if we are struggling, you know, yes, I, I know of numerous women's only networking groups, for example. I know of numerous women's only, I'm in some, you know, women's only charity organisations and stuff. There are fewer men only organisations. And you're absolutely right, Hannah, those are sort of seen as well the masons is one isn't it i know they do have female mason groups now but you know, lady masons lady masons masonettes um, <laughs> but there are you know that they are not a one bed in london yeah exactly. <laughs> there, are, there are predominantly um you know uh, male only masons masonic groups um 
and, and they are seen as very sort of chauvinistic places and very traditional and you know they don't like equality and they don't let women in and, and actually they're far from that and and again there's a an age associated with that you know you're only going to go and join a rotary club or a masonic club normally if you're probably at least over 30 aren't you if you are a young lad you, you wouldn't in a million years go and knock on the local masons would you <laughs> It's a it's a weird one because I think you're right. As soon as um, speaking as someone who is is absolutely pro equality, even if someone were to mention a men only anything to me, my first thought would go to that's not right. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it may be a completely positive, supportive environment that's not um, kind of discriminating against anybody. But the, the second you kind of mention it, um, because mm -hmm. of kind of the way the world's been and the way the world's moving, that you know the thought can go straight to negativity and that's mm. and that's maybe the thing that needs to change i mean i'm not a fan of women's only groups either i think self-segregation is not the way is not the way that you build equality but i would balk less at a women's only group than i would mm. at a male you know no girls allowed kind of group but i think that's a lot of that is kind of historical context yeah. Well, I mean, Dali at the moment with, with some people in Bake Up, they're setting up a, a men's mental health group, uh, which will have sort of several arms to it. One is kind of, you know, just, just pop in for a, a brew and have a chat. Uh, one of them is much more sort of coaching. So, uh, you know, constructive growing a business or starting a business or whatever. And one of them is much more about mental health. So they're being run by different kind of professionals. Um, but they're, I mean, they're at the very start of the journey. But the thing that has spurred them on to do that is because in Bake Up over the last kind of 18 months there have been a massive increase in suicides of, of young lads and by young lads I mean from kind of 16 to 23 um, and very much I think over the pandemic you know this has got increasingly worse mm. hasn't it that everybody's been trapped at home you know loneliness has got worse job opportunities have got worse you know people have been very isolated and at the same time the NHS has been overwhelmed so there's nowhere to access those sorts of traditional help and the other thing we were saying this last week you know nowadays if you go to your GP and say I've got mental health issues or I'm really struggling they give you a phone number to phone they don't even yeah. do the referral for you so you then have to go home pick up the phone and say I'd like to talk to somebody or whatever that take you know when you're in that headspace of there's no fucking point doing anything you're not going to go home and ring the number are you so straight away they've put a barrier there to, to accessing mental health services so you know they're starting this very thing but already people are saying like well you know you're starting a men's only group blah 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 and, and it's really sad and yet again when we did that for women there was loads of comments on social media. Well, where's the support group for mental health uh, for men yeah. you know, and all the rest of it? I mean, when I was at college, though, so, you know, a good number of years ago, one of my friends did sadly kill himself. And then he was, it was, you know, oh, you know, lots of young men are killing themselves. Young boys aren't getting access to mental health and blah, blah, blah. And he'd been let down by the health care professionals around him and stuff. And like, I mean, how many years ago was I at college? It's at least five, mm, six. Mm. So like, it's, a, <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah, that, yeah. But, but for a long time, I feel like we've been saying men's mental health crisis is rising and men need to access the support. And yet still, I feel like with, with the advent of um, like online dating in particular, the pressure on women has always been there, but the pressure on men feels greater now um, to you know be strong and be sensitive and be attractive and be tall and be buff and be a breadwinner and you know and be yeah. you know and all these things that just feels like they have to do even more now and there's still not the support and people are still not talking about it yeah I mean uh, we we haven't we've talked about women's body issues haven't we and you know how how women view themselves in terms of you know Instagram there was that report that came out recently about how Instagram is damaging to young girls in terms of their body positivity and stuff which is fucking obvious isn't it yeah. but I mean I haven't been on an internet dating site recently um but you know I have friends who have shown me photos of people who are on internet dating sites men and quite well the ones I don't know whether she's just sending me the ones that look like this but quite a lot of them they are you know either completely naked or naked from the top from the waist up they're they're posing they're, they're showing the muscles and I just think if you are not one of these buff lads that goes to the gym all the time and is comfortable taking the top off how are you even going to compete in that market it must feel phenomenally claustrophobic I don't reach do you do a lot of internet dating 
<laughs> I was waiting for that. Did you see my little smirk? I was like, oh, bitch, she's coming. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, let's have a laugh about that. Um, I, I think it's, um, yeah, I mean, they're either half naked, holding fish, or riding a motorbike at the minute. I think that's you know, Hold the this route. fish. Hold, holding a, you know, yeah, like the, I've like been fishing up at the size of my fish. Yeah. 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 Not like, like a sardine in between yeah. each of them. Not, it's not, a, not, it's not, a not like a. This is yeah. my mate fish or anything weird like that. Yeah, because that would be weird. I mean, you know, if we're going to break down, you know, some taboos, uh, you know, hold up a fish. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe the algorithms yeah. are just gaming you and you think that you really like fishermen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I clearly have a type. Let's put it have that way. Have you got a big pole? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't Oh, don't even start. Honestly. But I think it's it must be so difficult. And I, and I don't think it's like I think I, I, I can't stand it myself, quite frankly. And when I say you know, internet dating, I'll go on, I'll just have a look through and do nothing about it. I'm like still a, a voyeur there as well, yeah. <laughs> because it's like, it feels so unnatural to me. You know, it's, it just feels weird. Like where are the days where you go into a bar and just chat to somebody and actually, you know, just have a beer or whatever. Um, so yeah, well, it feels comes, very we forced. We don't do that anymore, do we? I mean, for one thing, <laughs> for the last 18 months, we haven't been able to go in pubs, but but that traditional way of going to the pub and meeting somebody who is mm. either in your existing or your extended friendship group, so you kind of knew them somehow or somebody knew it's them. very different. Yeah. Very that different now. That's not there. So how do yeah. you meet people? And then but, you would make a connection based on personality, whereas now it's just, you know, how just many the fish that they're holding. Mm. Like it's it's yeah. just how many fish yeah. there. Immediately. Immediately. How many yeah. salmon can you fit in your hands? <laughs> I only go out with men who can hold Bear four with. salmon at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a real, it's a real weird one. It's, it's kind of the whole uh, kind of Tinder and all that kind of stuff because, um, you know, I've talked at length about this with, with my, uh, my fiancé. Because we were both on on kind of these kind of sites before we got together, and we we kind of both kind of selves really lucky that we we kind of met in the old fashioned way, if you like. Like mm -hmm. we, we ran into each other in in person at a, at a boot camp of all things, so we literally saw each other at our worst, um, <laughs> and, and hit it off from there. But you know, back when we were on the, uh, the these kind of dating sites, it, it's. It's the wrong way around. You you know you, you get an initial attraction, which is the same as when you meet in real life. But then you're spending a lot of time getting to know someone via kind of text message, and you're getting to know too much about that person before you actually meet. And then inevitably, when you turn up and you meet um, in person, it still comes down to that fact as whether there's a spark or not. And if yeah. there isn't, you're then in a weird position where you know all this stuff about this person, but there's no spark, and you've got to go. Well, actually, you know, uh, see you later. Um, so, but also, there's a there's a massive thing, isn't there? Like when you, you know, I know when I'm emailing somebody or even a, a bit zooming, but you you kind of build up your impression of somebody, don't you? You could I've I've had situations where I've been emailing somebody for two years through a work situation, and then you meet them and you're like, oh my god, you are nothing like I was expecting you to be. Not just looks, but everything. So you know, if you are building a relationship based on text and email and Facebooking and whatever. All, all them their social media things um you know it, it's you build up your impression of them in your head and then you meet yeah. and they're never going to match up to that and so it's you're like, right it's completely unnatural yeah it's like it's like meeting a character in a book you know what your impression of them is was possibly never what the author or the original person intended yeah that's yeah. a good analogy yeah um, so anyway, men, eh? Let's get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, think that's that a really good point. Go on, Rachel. Why? Why has it changed so much though? Because I, I've got younger brothers. You know, my my next brother down is four years younger than me, and he he would have gone out, gone out, you know, in into town and this, that, and the other. That's how you meet people. My youngest brother, um, he's twenty one. And, you know, so he, he does, you know, still meet people on, you know, face to face going out or whatever. But there, there seems to be like, I, I don't know, what, at what point do you stop meeting people face to face and going out and trans, you know, and, and go on to online dating instead of going out? It's, I find it a, a whole kind of a mystery to me as well, really. Mm. And, and well, I think age. Well, well maybe it is, but also, also it's less opportunity, I think. That's what I mean about age. Like, who the hell goes out these days? Like, we do go out though. We've we've got like young. We've got uh, apprentices at, at at work who are like kind of eighteen to to twenty 
22, 23 years old. Uh, and they go out, they just do it in a much more mature and adult yeah, they manner do. than, than they I They are used to much do. more grown up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they'll go out exactly. for a meal and you know, they'll yeah. go out to, to really? like, have a couple of drinks. Yeah. They won't just go out on a Friday and Saturday night and get They don't just drink two well. litres of cider in the park. And, and then, then get, get leathered. Yeah, wow. Oh, <laughs> no, well, this is what it. I've been trying to tell you, Rachel. Right, okay. It's, my, it is uh, very my different. It's very what? different these days because they, they are there's a, a, a there is a maturity. You're right, Rob, of of how the youngsters. I will call them that because fuck, I feel like I'm I'm the child. But you know, they they will go out. They'll have conversations. They want they want to connect. Mm. Whereas you know, my generation, most of just wanted to get absolutely leathered and and do do untold things to each other and then yeah. not see them again do you know what i mean but that yeah, doesn't yeah. exist anymore and it's yeah. like oh Sorry. where are they how sad where do i get do the fat do you think that's the, do you think that's the thing because they're going out for like civilized meals and they're all sitting around and having a conversation that that's that's quite an insular activity isn't it you're only going to talk to the people you're immediately with and, yeah. and you know i mean there's less drug use as well isn't it let's be honest i disagree there's less alcohol use i disagree we need to hang oh, out with okay. marisha more yeah, yeah we i disagree do. Yeah, we do. i, I, um, I think there's there's uh, and i was actually going to come on to that because i do think that also feeds into the the male space a lot um and i, I think that there there is if if you were to take the ones that are quite well behaved and mature there is less alcohol less drug use and more appreciation for life the world etc from their perspective the ones that do take drugs there's a massive ketamine problem at the minute massive anyone that goes out raving they're all off the tits on ket and they don't even it's it's not even a, a nice time out do you know what i mean it's either you know the the, the absolute they can't even remember what's going on so i do think there is an issue there and i think have you got given the phone that there's <laughs> can we come Stand by. <laughs> offline, <laughs> offline. <laughs> but i think that, that that doesn't help when you're talking about mental health issues yeah, i think yeah, that there's also right. like this kind of assumption that we could we, we talk to, we talk about mental health once you get to 16 18 but actually for boys it it, it like with no let's turn it on its head for girls or females then it tends to start much younger you know there's always conversations about that always a how you're feeling always you know something going on uh, to do with feelings or you know whatever but boys it doesn't start at all until it's almost like it's too late like, you know, if, if it started when you were a bit younger to, to be able to manage your feelings better or to express yourself, um, then maybe there's there's more chance of them talking about it a little bit later on. Do you yeah, know what I'm getting thing, at? It's yeah, kind of left good. late. I have, yeah, I have, and girls are taught much more about, you know, and I think perhaps it's because girls hit puberty slightly earlier now. So, I mean, I know with, with Leon's class, and I don't want to go over stuff we talked about last week, but, you know, they started PSHE lessons in year six, but they were separated immediately. So I, I know what Leon was taught. I don't know what the girls were taught. But if they're reaching puberty at different stages, you know that's fine but surely they should all be in the same class learning the same thing but if, if a boy is not going to go through puberty for three or four years after a girl they still need to be having those conversations about this is what's going to happen this is how you talk about your emotions this is how you understand it why are we separating them out to have these conversations it's crackers mm, and i think i think it comes earlier than that as well like and um, they always say, don't they show me the child until they're five and I'll show you the adult. And mm. like, I think those formative years of talking to, to kids about their feelings mm. uh, and making it OK not to cry rather than, you know, suck it up, be a man and, you know, don't don't cry, don't show your emotions. I do mm. see that still happening in my own family even. Yeah, I mean, Rob, you've got a, a, a lad, I presume he's in year six, is he, at primary? Not gone yes. to high school yet, yeah. No, so, I mean, have you any idea what he's been taught in PSHE? Does does he get taught about emotions and talking? Not as yet, no. There's been right. none of that stuff uh, gone on as yet. Um, I, do you think I, he talks about it with his friends? How? I mean, how open are, are that generation, do you think? Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm sad to say I probably don't know. Um, it's... When I get him, it's kind of like on a on a weekend every other weekend because uh, I'm separated from his from his mum. So when when I have him, it's kind of uh, and this is probably to my detriment to be honest. It's probably more about uh, kind of having the good times. Fun times, uh, yeah, times yeah, 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 um, yeah. So after this, I'm going to make it my mission to uh, <laughs> to, to, to ask him, find out but, what he's been taught and what he's thinking and what, what's going mm. on. 
you know you it, are not alone in this like agreed. our dad yeah, 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 yeah. like we yeah. had the same family situation and when we saw our dad it was you know like from time sunday dad. beaches yeah, yeah. from time sunday dads and yeah. And, you know, you never had those conversations about yeah. how each other are feeling or, and even now, like, we we don't have those conversations at all. Like, I don't think he really knows very much about me at all. <laughs> mm. I mean, so, uh, I mean, Leon, my son, is, is similar age, Rob, he's a, he's a year older. Um, and, and he has a best friend. They've been best friends since they were four months old and they will phone each other up. So if Leon has had a particularly tough day, he will phone Lewis up but they oh. don't then necessarily talk about the thing. They they phone each other up. They're a bit rude to each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Done this, done <laughs> Why didn't you answer the phone quickly? What are you playing? Why are you playing that? That's rubbish. And then they'll just sit on the phone whilst they're playing on the computer games or whatever. But, you know, occasionally I hear them talking about things. I, I did hear we got a conversation about puberty once, which was quite amusing. Um, but again, it's not, it's more about practical things that are happening in their lives. They wouldn't phone each other up and say, I just feel really crap today or somebody was mean to me today or whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, somebody said that they start to boys start talking about feelings in reception class, which is great. Um, but I, I think that somewhere along the line, that ability to have those conversations amongst boys must be lost. And, and part of it is it's just not cool, is it? I, I mean, is it that it. though? Or is it that is it that this is just how males are wired? I don't know. I know well, that's an interesting point. I was going to add, add into that because I, I I'm championing the the female arms that but feel that have that kind of male view on talking about feelings i don't talk about feelings i'm like 100 percent with rob like basically i don't go into groups and talk about anything basically you know i'm more likely to to take the piss out of someone in any way shape or form it's like very rare you're going to get me and find that you know i actually talk about something that i've got going on because i i deal with it first myself and then i might talk about it later but there's gonna be loads of us that are like that as well and well, i do I think like that, that yeah, but I but I think it's it's very difficult also as a as a female because there's always this perception of oh it's all right you girls all talk about this kind of stuff when again reality we, a lot of us don't you know mm. so I, I think that you know I think man, being able to manage is better. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I am very much the same. I'm very very contained, and I will only talk about something when I'm absolutely ready to talk about it. But. I know that I can and I know that I've got those those friends around me that if I do need them, they mm. will absolutely be there. And I, I don't know, Rob, is, is that how you feel as well? Do you feel like you've got friends that you could, but you don't yeah. necessarily need to? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's worth, I think, examining kind of where that, that behaviour come from, comes from. Because I'm, mm. I'm very much kind of a stoic and a bit of an introvert. Um, and some of that has to come from my dad because he's the same. Um, but I wonder how much his kind of um, personality and learned behaviours and how much he's kind of baked in in, in terms of genetics and, and whatnot. Because I'm, I'm the same as my dad and my son's uh, turning out so far to be exactly the same as me. And I'm, yeah. not, I'm not mad at that because um, as growing up, things like bullying never really affected me because I never took anything to heart. Yeah, uh, and I can see the kind of same thing in him as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've seen him looking at other kids fighting and arguing. He just kind of looks with a bit of a quizzical expression on his face, and then has a bit of a chuckle to himself and walks off. Yeah. So it, it, I, I hope he is like me and it doesn't affect him. Uh, but at the same mm -hmm. time, I hope he's like me that has friends around him that he can speak mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I agree with that, and I I'm not a talker. I'll talk if I'm at crisis point, but I have to get to crisis point before I'll say that there's anything wrong. But mm. I don't think there's anything wrong with emotional resilience and managing mm. your own kind of shit and then dealing with it later. And and I think the the world is set up that you think oh you know a problem shared is a problem halved, and not everybody wants to behave like that. And mm. so if there's a large portion of people that don't want to talk about their feelings then the options on offer medically and professionally are take pills which are a sticking plaster or talk about your feelings and you know sometimes you don't like I was discharged from my counsellor when I had postnatal depression because I she couldn't fucking get anything out of me like I just wouldn't talk to her like it <laughs> doesn't work for me and um, and I think maybe instead of 
like berating people or not you know not berating but saying well you know you don't you're not talking you should be talking about it yeah Yeah, if you're not talking about it it's your own fault that's the issue as well isn't it instead of that maybe we look at the reasons that so many people and men in particular feel this unmanageable burden to Mm. look amazing to be a to be a breadwinner, to be a pillar mm. of society, you know, to earn a good wage and to keep your, and and keep your relationships going. And maybe we look at all these societal pressures that are put on people and adjust that rather than, mm. you know, opening up talking therapy to people. That mm. works for kind of depression and, and, and generalised mental health uh, problems. I think where this falls down, particularly with men, is when we come on to the issue of domestic violence. And I know when mm. um, when we were talking about when the uh, World Cup or Euro or whatever was on, we um, put a post on the local Facebook page, which is a cesspit. Um, and we said, you know, if you are a woman and you are likely to experience domestic violence during the England football matches, we have opened a safe space for you at the at the local church. Um, and, and immediately that post was pounced on by a lot of men who said, where's the space for men? Which is a fair enough question because there wasn't any. Um, and and what we, my argument was, you know, okay, open one. You know, we we have taken the initiative. Nobody came, nobody from the government came and said, oh, why don't you, you know, we were like, the, we've seen a need. We've spoken to a church hall. We've opened a room. If you are a man and you're generally that concerned, you're going to have to do it yourself because those support services aren't there. But a man then was talking to me and I say talking in the polite way of putting it, but he was saying he'd experienced domestic violence. He'd been in a situation where he'd been going down the road with his child. His ex had been following him, hitting him, all sorts. He went into a shop to seek help and they called the police and arrested him or the security guard took him into a room or something, assuming it was his wife that, or his ex that was at risk. He said he's been to the doctors and, and been knocked back. He's been, he even um, at one point approached a women's domestic violence charity and was told that the services weren't available for him. So I think when we get to That's those sorts awful. of extremes of that Isn't yeah it? exactly and and that in that system is very skewed towards women i mean i know yeah. we work don't we with a lot of the women's refuges and do a lot to support that i don't know of a single men's refuge and i wouldn't mm. even know where to go to find one i don't know yeah. i mean where how, how do we find that and I think um, similarly with domestic violence, I think uh, eating disorders is is similar that men with, yes. oh, you know, from reading anecdotal and looking at statistics online, men with eating disorders and body dysmorphia find it much more difficult to get taken seriously by their GPs to even get a referral. And yeah. like, you know, men get, men are statistically just as likely to get eating disorders as women. Well, actually, teenage boys are, are, are more so. And I think, again, we're, we're back to, you know, body positivity and, and social media. But nowadays, with the rise of sort of YouTube and TikTok and all of these videos, there are a lot of boys doing more sort of feminine things. You know, they do makeup videos and they do have to walk in high heel videos. Or maybe this is just what my child's watching. But, you know, there, there's a lot of that kind of culture out there. And, you know, it's reaching mainstream now with RuPaul's Drag Race and all the rest of it. But those boys always are very very thin and i think they're trying to look feminine um but they all look like they need a bloody good meal or certainly the ones that i've seen so i do wonder if there's something there about you know body, like we're back to body positivity aren't we but i don't know rob what does your child watch does he does he watch a lot of um you know tiktok and youtube and stuff no, not so much. Um, he watches YouTube, but it's mainly kind of gaming stuff. He um, he's into kind of Minecraft and and all that mm, kind of stuff. He's very really much a, very much a geek, like yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a weird one because I'm consciously conscious of uh, uh, actively conscious about what he's watching in terms of online because YouTube, you know, unless things are locked down really really well, you know, you, you can get access to anything. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's even more... when they're locked down, they can very yeah, quickly yeah, find yeah. things. Yeah, they um, they can work yeah. their way around it. It's just been obviously working in IT. I know how difficult it can be to to kind of lock down things mm. safely and completely. There's always a way around stuff, given a bit of knowledge. And unfortunately, the knowledge is freely available on the internet. Uh, yes. which is that <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know you, you've got to be careful. Um, but at the same time, you know. If, if you're raising your kids properly, I guess you don't necessarily need to censor things as much. Yeah, uh, that's if my that makes opinion. sense. Um, yeah. 
We use it as what? talking points in our house. I mean, I, I am notoriously bad for not censoring anything. We, we will watch anything. Um, and, and I think Leon's reasonably well adjusted. But if there is something that he comes across that is either inappropriate or, ha you know, I have concerns about it, we will talk about that. I will say, you know, this is this is not quite right or that doesn't feel good or, you know, why is he talking about the fact that he's not eating anything for three days or, you know, mm. I mean, he's not, I'm making it sound like he's watching extreme diet and videos. He's not. Um, but, you know, we bring it up and we talk about it and that's the way to do it because, you know, they're kids, aren't they? If somebody says to you, you can't watch that. I remember when my mum told me I wasn't allowed to watch Dirty Dancing, that, that I just made it my life's mission to watch Dirty Dancing uh, and I was really disappointed when I did because I'm absolutely <laughs> oh, big dirty sure. in it. I don't know that like you you have put this thought into Naya's head that like the in-betweeners or Leon has that like the in-betweeners oh, yeah, is Leon, really yeah. funny oh my god like I gave him the other day and like I watched the in-betweeners and I was just dying of embarrassment it wasn't that particularly like I didn't want her to hear the thing it was just I didn't want to hear them in her presence it was just like now I've got to oh you've got to get over that that you're no, gonna have a teenager it. very no, soon no. oh my god Hannah you've got to be able to talk about masturbation in front of your child no I'm not never <laughs> yes <laughs> I'm sorry you've got you yeah I was saying the other day you've got the embarrassment levels of a teenager Boy, you've got to get over it. You know, no, all right, fine, send it to me. Is... I'll talk to her about wanking. It's fine. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's too early anyway, in the day yeah. for that chat. Honestly, it's like pre-watershed. <laughs> Half past four. Anyway, Rob, I wanted to ask you, uh, as a man, um, yes. how, and absolutely away from masturbation, how do you um, kind of, do you feel the pressure of like body image and stuff like online or? Yeah, um, it's a good question because I don't, I do is the answer in a nutshell, but um the, the more kind of difficult question to answer, to answer is where that comes from. Um, part of it is is kind of self, self-driven self and that's completely my issue and I'm self-aware enough to be aware of that issue. Um, that, and, and most of that stems from, um, Marie, she's probably seen the photo to be honest, but you know, at one point in my life I was 25 stone, um, wow. you know, hugely overweight. Um, so in uh, my issue kind of now is is still uh, that when I look in the mirror, I still see that person sometimes. Um, mm. But the other part of it has has to be driven by kind of um, uh, pop culture, body image, you know. Mm. And, and for, for men, it's, you know, I, I dare say that although the uh the holding up of the the ideal woman is a massive issue it's kind of changed somewhat over the years it's gone from being really waif like to being really like strong and uh you know that that the ideal has changed and it's still quite mm -hmm. da very damaging but that the, the kind of male ideal has stayed the same for literally decades it's mm. you know right from sylvester Stone in, in rocky through to chris Hemsworth in 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 Thor films, well, even know. earlier, like Roman Roman art and stuff on pottery was all you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just been relentless for literally, well, like you said, hundreds of years. Um, mm. So, part Rob, of it has can to I be just? Oh, well, did, when you say you used to be really overweight and then you lost a lot of weight, did that mm. coincide with when you said you were on like dating websites and stuff? Is that when you was that a, a driver for you? What what made you decide you needed to change? Um, n no, it was probably my son, to be honest. Um, right. the, the majority of the weight was gained kind of just, uh, after, well, during pregnancy and after it was, it was kind of born, it was, that's when it got piled on the majority. Same. Of it. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, it's normally the woman that puts the weight on during pregnancy, Rob. <laughs> what was this, sympathy eating? Sympathy eating, yeah, it must have been. <clears throat> um, and it was, um. I remember um, kind of him being maybe three or four years old, something like that, uh, maybe a little bit younger, and me just going, you know, I, I've got a son now. I need to be healthy and around for 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 him for the next at least few decades. Um, mm. So I needed to do something about about it. So it was more it was more about my health, um, but there was definitely a percentage of it in there that was kind of you know wanting to look like. Um, you know, the, the ideal body image, um, which I'm still a long way off. <laughs> um, Rob, where were you getting that kind of ideal male body image? Like when you were on your weight loss journey, for example, did you like read men's health? Were you, I mean, we were talking before, weren't we, about following a, a, a property porn site on Instagram? You know, did you did you use social media as inspiration? What Where were you getting that male ideal from? 
to be honest, it, it was probably more of a, um, it was more before I'd made that decision, to be honest, more of a beating myself with a stick kind of attitude. Mm. You know, once once I made that decision to kind of change, that was uh, more from a place of positivity, I guess, rather than <laughs> beating myself up about not looking the way that um, people did when mm. I was really overweight. Mm. It's really interesting though, Rach, that you cite men's health. So I sometimes read men's health, um, especially online, because the workout ideas are really good in it. Um, and I really try and stay away from women's fitness magazines and health magazines, because I find women's ones so incredibly toxic. Like it's work out for a, you know, nicer arse or work out yeah work out for better tits or get a flat stomach or stop your arms wobbling you know it's critical whereas men I, I find but this is reading it from a female perspective men's health magazines are much more you know work out to work this group of muscles or work out to work mm-hmm. this part of you know get your cardio into this zone with this workout you know it's much more technical um, rather well, that's than interesting because I remember. I think mm. when you first got with Dave, we bought him. I think a men's health subscription for Christmas, um, and I, and I didn't. I, the next year, I was toying with that, and I was like looking through it, and I thought, Do you know what? Actually, I feel this is as toxic to men as the female version would be because it was just all bodies of like Adonis-looking men, and I thought that must be really demoralising. When you look like Dave. No. <laughs> Poor Dave. Poor Dave. <laughs> He's killing him. <laughs> There's a whole thing about him. Um, There's a whole thing about kind of, uh, this is something my, my fiance talks about a lot now. There's kind of the, the whole thing about male and female gaze. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. yep. yeah. talked about that. Yeah. Uh, the, the kind of basis of that, I guess, is that um, the, the really ripped six pack looking guys isn't for women, it's for for the other guys uh, to, yeah. you know, to, to be I in like that kind of I like a squidgy cult. man. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, also, well, like, that's it. it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like interesting that. though isn't it it is for for other men sometimes as well because yeah. you know like reese for example you know he if he goes to the gym and he works out he's literally flinging god knows what weights around like some kind of you know henchman and he's like uh, and i and i watch i watch how other men react to him and i actually find it fascinating because it's either you know there's there's an element of jealousy for some some you know or but most is you know, I want to be, how do I do that? I want to be that, you know, right. it's it's for the male as opposed to, you know, he'd be petrified, you know, to, yeah. to know that there were women, you know, fawning over him or this, that and the oh other. God, no, With men was... is, is, yeah, it's all about the men. I men was there really an event once and Reese was there and he had like a, a group of women in bits <laughs> behind him, like follow, like these like middle aged like older women. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like Dali at that wedding we were at Hannah, where we had all those middle-aged women like literally hanging off him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, young man. But I do think that there's this like acceptance of dad bod because, like, yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of women are into that much more so than a lot of men are into mum bods. Well, absolutely. <laughs> but also the other thing. I mean, I have a friend who put a post on on Facebook the other day, and and she basically said, "Look, I'm fed up of working. I like food. Uh, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. middle aged now. I'm just gonna I'm gonna accept my squidgy bits." And and a, a friend, a male friend, had put underneath, "If only women realise that the squidgy bits are the best bit." And I thought, you know, again, are, are women doing this as a competitive thing? Are we doing it because we compare each other? And and actually, men don't give a shit if we've got a wobbly tummy. Rob, mm-hmm. do you care? Tell us, Rob, do you care? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No. <laughs> Absolutely but speaking not. for on behalf of all men, all Rob. Men, yeah. <laughs> no, you know, listen. Everybody's different, aren't they? Um, you know, for you're sure. gonna get you're gonna get men who want um, really, um, want a better word, fit women. You're gonna get women who want really fit men, and you're gonna get mm-hmm. the the complete opposite. You know, I, I think. Um, the the rise of the dad body, if you like, uh, is 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 changing perceptions, um, albeit slowly. Probably kind of mm. as slowly as kind of the same things happening for for women as well. Because um, mm. as much as there are people out there that say they like the dad bod, there's still a large po- part of the population that that want the the stick thin um, mm. supermodel. You know, well, I'm here for the dad bod. 
Yeah, one podcast. in the dad bod column for me as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's true, actually, though, because I think, you know, from a, a, a female perspective, you know, the whole body positive movement seems seems, you know, very female heavy. It's very accepted for women, you know, to talk about all their lumps and bumps and whatever they've got going on. And um, but there's a, a, a significant amount less of that of of a male perspective mm. you know and they've, they've all they've all got them they've all all different shapes and sizes Absolutely. um you know but there's there's much less of that you know for for men for and sure. actually you know if you love somebody you don't love them for their body do you you, you yeah you, know. you do yeah i do, yeah, you do. <laughs> I think that, like, Rob, what you were saying earlier about, about the ideal body for a woman has changed that in you know in the 90s it was heroin chic and like yeah. and then now it's you know much curvier and i know i i feel better about myself now that it's curvier because i am never going to be heroin chic and um, mm. so you know now that that shape is in i suppose it fits my self-perception better but mm. but that when that changes that'll be dashed i'll be ruined yeah we've, you know, we've talked about that before haven't we because we're you know i was saying we we when you see these young girls now who are wearing kind of tight crop tops and, and leggings regardless of their body shape and I'm always like oh, we would have been ripped apart in the 90s for that like we would not have been able to show some bulge like that and I have all respect for them but I know I still would never have the confidence to do that I still can't I think a lot of that is because of our mother maybe maybe um i just uh, time is marching on and and before you know final thing before we we close up i just want to get the the male perspective please rob um in the week of like sarah everard and stuff i've listened to quite a few podcasts some some by male and some by women and, and they were talking about you know what men now need to do to make women feel safer and you know if you're a man and you're out at night and there's a woman on her own make sure you walk behind her and make sure you do, uh, so you know walk a long way behind her and you're not close up behind her and you're not intimidating and all the rest of it um i don't know how much of that you've read rob but you know does any of that rhetoric make you feel uncomfortable make you feel like you're being blamed for something that isn't your fault um no um probably it's there's no ideal answer to this is there but it's much better than the the kind of this is what women need to do to avoid being attacked mm. kind of kind of rhetoric that used to get thrown around right from the 70s you know Women should feel safe, um, you know, without having to take steps to to make themselves less of a target. You know, it's mm. it's you know it's it's not the women's fault. It's not the general populace populace's fault. It's it's the the attackers, the the rapists, the the people that do it. Um, mm. So I guess everyday men taking steps to make make women feel safer, although not ideal. That kind of it's been put on them. Because it's it's the attacker's fault. It's, it's yes, it's not better. their fault either. Yeah. It's better than having women take steps to not be attacked, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, there was that whole backlash, wasn't there? The not not all men backlash. And, you know, we, we've said many times, of course, it's not all men because we, we're married to some of them and we've given birth to some of them. So some of them we do like. Uh, and we every single woman knows that it's not all men, but it's that small percentage. And you're right. Uh, but what I think what worries me is, you know, it's as you've just said, it's that small percentage of men who are rapists and murderers and attackers you know those are the ones in the wrong and whether we say it's women's responsibility to keep themselves safe or it's men's responsibility to keep women safe none of that you know those rapists and murderers and attackers are the ones who are st they're the naughty ones aren't they you know the rest of us we are good people and we kind of don't need that message putting on us Oh, naughty boys! Naughty boys! Naughty! Naughty! naughty. The oh, truth of it women. is, you know, no matter what, uh, what's done to to make people feel safer, whether it's the, the men doing it or the women doing it or whoever's doing it, the truth of the matter is that, that you know the criminals are still going to find a way to do what they want to do. Yeah, uh, and that's the sad fact of the world, unfortunately. Um, mm. So yeah, Sorry. everybody, everybody, do what you can, but um, you know, catch the people before they do the bad things. Yeah. Do we think, you know, dealing with toxic masculinity, improving mental health support services for men, all of these things that we've just spent the last 48 minutes talking about, do we think if we implement that, that will we reduce the, the rate of rapists and murderers and men who take advantage of women and kill them? Or do we think there might just be a small percentage of people who are very naughty boys? Um, both. And that's not, yeah, not yeah. specifically. I don't expect you to have the answer to that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
uh, I think you know education for anything is is always the key, isn't it? So um, education and setting up uh, institute not institutions is not the right word, but setting up uh, ways in which um, people can be helped uh, and educated is always going to have an impact. But at the same time, you're just always going to get that. Um, mm one that slips through the net that nobody is even aware of um, that's going to do something mm. that's horrific. And also you basic work. things like access to housing and education and sufficient yeah. food. You know, it's all yeah. of that stuff, isn't it? Go on, Hannah. And, and I think as well, like, women are commoditized in the media a lot, and I think that's a big part of it as well. Mm. Um, but, yeah, you know, it does go back to just, just fulfil it. Like, as a society, we just sh should be fulfilling people's basic needs. Um, much better from from birth so that um so that we don't have as many problems with mental health with drug abuse with low self-esteem with damaging relationships with mothers and you know all these things that go into making somebody very unpleasant very mm. naughty very naughty and I mean we were talking last week where you know I had some statistics but a, a big part of what came out of last week's conversation was the need for good male role models and and it's it's demonstrable in the statistics that men who grow up or, or boys who grow up in families without a good male role model or without a man at all are much more likely to be susceptible to this and you know the 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 good men out there are going actually you know you are most helpful by just being good role models and showing our sons and daughters that, you know, you can be in a relationship and you can respect women and you can talk about your feelings and all the rest of it. So actually, you know, just by being a good person, you are helping. Yeah, just don't be a dick. That's <laughs> don't be a dick. Yeah. Don't be a dick. That's essentially That's it. words to live by right there, don't it? It is words to live by. It's the Grow Traffic motto. It's Hannah Weinold's motto. Don't be a dick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are out of time. Thank you very much to all of you. Um, I'll go around and do final last words. Rish, final words, final thoughts. I haven't got any final words. My final words come af after we've finished the chat. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't have anything to say. I just find it really interesting. I think it's, uh, it's something that we could debate for hours, right? You know, because yeah. there's so many different sides to it. Um, but I just urge people to support the the ones out there that are trying to make some noise. Uh, you know, like I think I, I said, the boys get sad too. Those guys, for example, and um, they are there. You just have to kind of find them. And there's a lot of cool ones around, you know, because I know there's for a lot of people it's not cool, right? I get that. Um, so find them because they are there as well. I think everybody re recognizes the fact that um, we need places to to be able to chat um, and to support people that need to chat. Absolutely. Um, so go yeah, find there them. Is, yeah, there is a community out there for everybody, isn't it? You just got to find your tribe. Yeah. Uh, sure. Hannah, last words. I think um, look after the men in your life. Reach out mm. to them, and and if you, if they look like they need support, you know, it's it's reasonably easy to tell if somebody is struggling. Like they might become withdrawn. They might stop communicating. They might communicate more. Um, and just you know reach out to people because it's so difficult to ask mm. for help but it's a lot easier to accept it if it's offered mm. so that would be my yeah. nice point nice mm. I like that one. Very good. Yeah. Thanks. Rob um just following on from the kind of finding your tribe and the community out there that can that can help people even if it's not a community or a, a group or uh you know a, a, a an organization that can help you just talk to someone um mm. Because mm. as much as I say, you know, I, I deal with my own business and I'm a stoic and all that stuff. If it gets to a certain point, I have to talk to someone. And that, you know, my person is is my other half, my fiance. Um, mm. And although uh, it might be more difficult than kind of your partner sometimes to find that one person to talk to, you know, there will be someone that will listen, be it an individual or an organisation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, and mine would be very similar, actually, you know, going back to the, the massive increase in, in rates of suicide among young lads. But A, you know, if you are a young lad, look out for your friends. You know, as Hannah said, if they're looking like they're starting to struggle, you know, reach out, even if that is just taking them for a pint, just, yeah. just do that. Um, but also, you know, you, you, we can't wait around. The women haven't waited around for services to be magically provided. Um, and, and men can't either. If there is a need, if there's nothing in your area and, and you have the means to start something, even if it's just starting a group that meets at the pub every Thursday night, start that. 
um, and provide that community because it's nobody. There's no yeah. um, nobody's magically going to come and wave a yeah, wand and make it better. And if uh, that is more than you can manage, write to your MP. Yes, absolutely. That's a very good point. Uh, somebody's put, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't see your name, but they've said Andy's Man Club is a great place for men to get That is a really good club. place. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that yeah. online. And, yeah. and there are actually, you know, Rob said it before, there are places, if you go and, and Google it, there are, you know, remote organisations that are there. You can start by chatting to a chat, uh, you know, in a chat box and start a conversation that way if you're not comfortable with picking up the phone or going to your gp or whatever so there are there are means of getting help unfortunately it relies on you reaching out um that's it thank you very much everybody this has been a very interesting chat so um happy international men's day for friday if you have watched on facebook live thank you very much uh we will <coughs> continue to monitor the chat so if you're watching Patrick you can still leave us a comment we'll put some resources uh, resource links in there um if you are watching on YouTube subscribe below guys subscribe, subscribe like and subscribe um and if you're listening on no stop it Rob's like no not coming uh, yeah, back no, not coming no, back no, no. Yeah. Um, and if you're listening on podcast uh please leave us a review because it genuinely helps that's it Thank you very much, guys. We shall see you. We're back next week, but I don't know what we're talking about next week. We'll find out that, <laughs> right. Really good. Oh, it'd be awesome. <laughs>